Hey everyone, Kyle here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at a question we have in our Facebook group. And this question is by Sean. And he wants to know if we can trace this handwriting here that says, Love Holly. Now, as you can see, he tried doing this in, I think, Inkscape, and he was having trouble getting all the detail in here. So we're gonna take a look at this in Vectric software, and we're gonna see if we can turn this into a nice clean vector. So I already saved this image to my computer, so I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna go into our Vetric software. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to import a bitmap. And you can see his image is right here. So we're gonna select that and click open. And that'll import the image right to the center of your job. So we can zoom into that. Now, typically when converting images to vectors, we would use the trace bitmap tool, which is right here in create vectors. The one that looks like a bird here, select that. And you would adjust the settings here, click preview, and that would automatically trace what we have here. But as you can see, there's a lot of detail missing here. So in this case, we're going to have to actually manually trace this to get the best results. So I'm not gonna save that trace we just did. I'm just gonna click close and then I'll disregard that. So now we're gonna manually trace this with our drawing tools here. And you're most likely gonna to have to trace any kind of handwriting because usually you cannot get a nice high quality image from the handwriting. So that's gonna be the technique we're gonna take a look at in this video. So a quick tip before we start tracing, you can see when you select an image, it gets darker. And then when you deselect it and go to start tracing, it gets lighter. Sometimes that works to your advantage, but sometimes it's too light where you can't see it. So the way to darken an image without having it selected is first we have to select it. We have to right click and come down to object properties. And then right here, you can select where you want your fading to be. If you go all the way up, you can see you can barely see it. If you go all the way down, it'll have no fading even with it deselected. So when you're tracing, you can play around with this fading as much as you like, turning it up and down however you need it. In this case, I'm going to switch it back to about the default here, which is about 52 and click close. And if we need to change this, we can. So now we'll get into the process of tracing. So we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna start with this first word here. And this word is love. And you can see there's a lot of details missing here. So we're gonna to have to get a little creative as we're tracing. So the main tools we're gonna to focus on in tracing this is going to be the draw line tool and the draw curve tool. You can use other tools as well, but those would be the main tools we're gonna to use. And one thing I like to do before manually tracing things is turn off my smart snapping. So up here at the top, you have geometry snapping and then you have smart snapping. So when it's highlighted blue, that means it's on. If you click it and it's not highlighted blue anymore, that means it's off. So we're gonna turn our smart snapping off. That will give us a little bit more freedom and it won't snap in vertical or horizontal positions. So let's take a look at the draw curve tool first. So you can see when you select that, it looks like nothing happens, but if you bring your cursor out here, you can see now you can draw curves with your cursor. So to draw the curves, first I'm gonna zoom into this first letter here using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And if you hold in the scroll wheel, you can pan your view left and right, up and down. So we're gonna select on the edge of our shape here and we're just gonna click once and that's gonna create the first point. And then we can come down and click at another point and you can see if you tried making a sharp bend with your draw curve tool, uh, in this case, it looks like a piece might be missing here. I'm not sure, but if it's not, we can always remove that later. But if you click out here, you can see how much of a curve that makes. And if you try to continue on, you're gonna see that no longer follows the shape up here. So there's a few ways you can avoid that. I'm going to hit the escape key to end the line there and I'm gonna do Control Z to undo that. Now we're in our regular selection mode. And if we wanna go back to the draw curve tool, just hit the space bar on your keyboard. Now we are at the draw curve tool again. So if we were to trace this top portion here and come around and then come down right here to this sharp corner, if you hit the space bar, that'll end the line there. And then if you were to click on that point and continue drawing, you can see that's going to keep that sharp corner there. And then when you come back, 
coming around, you just keep clicking here. And then if we come to another sharp corner, we can click and hit the space bar again and keep on doing that same technique every time we reach a sharp corner there. And that'll keep all the curves right where you place them as you go along. Now that we looked at the curve tool, let's click escape to get out of that tool. And I'm gonna do control Z to undo those two lines we just created. Now we'll take a look at the line tool. So if you click the draw line here, that's gonna open up this form here, but we're not gonna use this form here in this case. We're going to manually trace like we were doing with the curve tool. Except in this case, the draw line tool will draw nice straight lines. But if you're using Vetric 10.5 or above, you will have the ability to draw curves and lines with the line tool. So I'll show you how to do that. So if we just select a spot up here to start a point, come down to the corner there, that'll draw a nice straight line there. And then we can come out here and draw this part here. But instead of clicking once, if you hold in your mouse key, you can see that'll start drawing a curve. So it takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but as you go along, you can click and drag and you can make the shape with your line tool. And then when you come to a straight section, you can click just one time and then I'll create a nice straight line. And you can see this portion is not perfect. So if we were to exit the line tool, you can right click to do that. And then if we go to the node editing, so right here in edit objects, go to node editing. You can take these points we just drew and the handles connected to them and you can edit those however you like. So you can see no matter what kind of mistakes you make, you can always come back and edit it later. So now that we know the differences between the draw line and the draw curve, we're gonna start tracing this. So I'm gonna just delete this shape there and I'm gonna go back to our draw curve tool. I'm a little bit more comfortable with that. I haven't gotten very used to the draw line functions yet. So I'm gonna use our draw curve. And then we are going to start tracing this. So in this case, this section here is pretty straight. So I'm not gonna use the draw curve tool for that. I like to use the draw line tool on any section like this that's nice and straight. And then any of the curve sections, I'm gonna use my draw curve tool. So I'm gonna start right here in this corner and I'm gonna click one time to start the curve. And then I'm gonna come out here and click another point and keep doing that. And every time you click a point, it's gonna connect those two points with a smooth curve. So we're just gonna keep following along. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. You just wanna get it as close as you can. You can always come back and edit later. And it's also handwriting as well, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So in any tight areas like this, we can zoom in. And you can see this kind of arches up here. So we're just gonna click a few times here to continue that arch. And then we're just gonna keep going along. And if you get to a corner like this, you can hit the space bar like we showed before. That'll stop that curve there. So now this is one line segment here. And then we're gonna come over here, click on this point, make sure you have your geometry snapping set. So it will snap to the end point there. And now you click that point and then you continue on going along the shape here. And we're just clicking every now and again until we get to another point there and we'll click spacebar to end that. And then we're gonna continue this. And then spacebar and then continue along. So this is all I'm doing here, just going along the lines here. So if you have a lot of text, this could take a lot of time, but this file isn't too big. So it shouldn't take us too long of time to uh, trace all this. So I'll save you the boring time of watching me do this. So I'm gonna speed this process up.
And you can see now we made it back to the beginning. And this is the section I said here. This is the straight section. So in this case, I'm going to use the line tool. So I'm going to go to draw a line. I'm going to snap to our endpoint there and just draw a straight line about to the top. I'm not going to go all the way to the top. I'm going to go just below the top and click to end that line there. And we can continue on with the line. But in this case, I want to stop it. So I'm going to click the space bar. That stops the line and keeps our draw line tool still open. So I'm going to click on this other point, come back up here to the top. And that's going to end the point there when we click the line. And now we can still draw our line, but instead of clicking the space bar this time, you can right click on your mouse. That will end the line and close the draw line tool up. Now you can see we have an open section up at the top here. So to connect those two together, I'm going to hold the shift key and select both objects there. And I'm going to use this tool down here in our edit objects. It's called join vectors with a smooth curve. And if you click that, you can see that automatically draws a nice smooth curve connecting those both together. And you just got to be careful if it didn't close on this end, it may have closed on the opposite end because that's open as well. So if that's the case, you can just close both ends and then trim the end you didn't want. You can trim that off with your scissor tool or your node editing. That tool is going to join the two closest points together first. And then if you were to click it again, you can see it joined together down here. But we don't want that, so I'm going to do Control Z to undo. And now we just have the top here that we wanted. So now that we have most of the shape all traced, we still have to come back and get any spots we missed, like the inside of these letters here. So I'm going to go around and do the same thing using our same techniques. So we're going to go to our draw curve tool and I will speed this up for you. Now you could see when I drew this shape here and it had a sharp corner here, when I came back to the end and connected the both endpoints together, it automatically drew this curve here bigger than I wanted it. So there's two ways you can avoid that with your draw curve tool. Either you have to stop before you come back to the end there if you want a nice sharp corner and then you can join that together afterwards or we can go to escape to exit our draw curve tool and then select this line we just created and type the letter N on your keyboard to go into the node editing and we zoom in on that corner you could take these handles and you can drag them but you could see if you take this handle up here and you try to bring it down that's going to give you an issue there. So another thing we can do is just bring one side down. We can take this last span that we just created here. We can right click on that and click delete span. That's going to remove that section there. And now we just have to connect this back together. So you can either drag this point to touch with this point here and join those together afterwards. Or we can come down here to our edit objects and we can join with a straight line. We can join with a smooth curve like we did earlier, or we can join by moving the endpoints together at a common point. But if we do that one, it's going to bring these somewhere in the center here. You can see if we click that, that moved that endpoint that we didn't want to move. So I'm going to do Control Z to undo that. Let's select these again. In this case, a nice straight line there would be okay. So I'm going to use that one there, join with a straight line. And you can see that joined together there with a straight line. And if this point here is too much of a sharp point, you can right click on it and go to smooth point and that's going to smoothen that point out there so it's not so sharp. And now you can see we have a nice sharp corner there. So I'm going to exit our node editing by typing the letter N again and I'm going to go back to our draw curve and we're going to continue on tracing our shapes here. And now you can see we have just about everything traced. And we can confirm that by deselecting our picture there. And your picture is actually put on a separate layer called the bitmap layer. So if you hit the little light bulb here, that will turn that visibility off. And now you can see we're left with just the vector shape that we just created. And then we can turn that other layer back on and you can compare, make sure you got everything. So it looks pretty good. Now the only thing we have left to do is join everything together. So you can see when we created all those curves and stopped at the corners, 
that created open vectors. So all of these are open vectors. Nothing's joined together. So in order to join everything together, we're going to select everything by clicking control, the letter A on your keyboard that selects everything. And we're going to go to edit objects. And at the bottom here, we have this join tool. You can also access this by typing the letter J on your keyboard. So we're going to select this. And this is going to join all of our open vectors together to create closed vectors. So at the top here, it says the selected vectors we have now, we have six closed and we have 26 open. So our whole goal here is to have only closed vectors. So down here at the bottom, you could see after we click this join button, we're going to have seven closed vectors and zero open. So that's exactly what we want. So we're going to click join and now we're going to click close. And now you can see when you select any of the shape here, it's going to select everything because it's now joined all together. Now it is going to exclude the little islands in between and that's because they are their own closed vectors. So they're still all closed vectors. They're just separate islands in the middle. So now everything is looking pretty good. You can manually edit using your node editing, however you like. I can see in this section here, it's looking a little thin there. So I can select this and type the letter N to go into our node editing. And you can just drag these nodes around to move them however you like. You can also drag the handles on these nodes to adjust them however you like. And if you mess something up, just hit Control Z and that'll undo. And we can adjust this just a little bit here. And now we can click away to deselect and that's looking a little bit better. Maybe a little bit tall right here. And you can adjust that down there. And you can see you, you don't have to get it perfect. Like I said, it's just handwriting. So all in all, this looks pretty good compared to the picture we had. So I'm gonna call this complete where we have it. So now we can select everything. You can draw a selection box to select everything here. And we're gonna group this all together. So there's a few ways you can group together. You can click this button here in your edit objects to group. You can also type the letter G on your keyboard. That'll group everything together. And you can also right click and go to group objects. So now everything is grouped together. So if we were to alter this in any way, everything is going to stay together. And now that we have this converted to vector shapes, we no longer need the bitmap. So you can either bring this back and delete the original picture there, or you can just leave it on the bitmap layer and just turn the visibility off. You can keep that for later if you needed it for any other reason. And now that we have vector shapes, we can now use these shapes to create any kind of toolpath. So we can do V carving, we can do pocketing, we can even do lasering. We can also select this and go to file export and you can export it as an SVG file. So we can use this in almost any kind of vector based software. So now we're just going to go over to our toolpath tab and we're gonna create a simple toolpath for this. So we're gonna select this and go to V carving and we're gonna use a 60 degree V bit we are not going to set a flat depth because this is very thin here. So we can just use our V bit to control the depth. And we're going to, we don't want to project on a 3D model and we don't want a clearance tool. So we're going to just select our 60 degree V bit and click calculate. And we're going to preview selected toolpath. And we're going to fill that in with the black color. And there you go. That's what our finished carving will look like. And of course, after we created the vectors there, we can now move, scale, rotate, or do anything you like with this text. If you found this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube and check out my website, learnyourcnc.com for more.